Jamie and Pam. You can observe a lot just by watching Yogi Berra. That quote was in Dr. Phil's book, Building Better Business. I believe he put that in there for a specific purpose, and it, re it really resonates with me because once again, as I explained in my last speech, I learned by, by observing and then by doing. The, we were supposed to attend three speeches, three community, or excuse me, on-campus speeches with our uh, employee contacts. I failed to do that, but I did, however, attend two meetings with an employee contact and my partner. I have one more to get in. So today I'm going to talk about the two that I did attend. The first one was a CPT all staff meeting, which was interesting for me um, because I kind of just come to class and then go home. I don't spend a lot of time on campus because I'm busy, so I kind of feel like I don't know a lot that goes on at the school. And to be quite honest, I didn't really care up until I actually attended these two meetings that I did attend. And now I have a completely different perspective and interest in the school. So it was very beneficial to me as well to attend these meetings. At this all staff meeting, uh, my contact was June Stacy Clemens, and she was very nice. She was welcoming. It wasn't the one that was listed for me on Angel, but she was very welcoming and understood. The person, first person that spoke was John Wallstrom. He discussed the budget issues of the college and how <coughs> the state, the legislative budget, we all know that they're cutting financial aid and they're wanting to make all of these changes to us. I'm a, I'm a financial aid student. I rely on that. So it was interesting to hear it because I hear it on the news and I tend to tune it out because I'm usually watching it in bed while I'm asleep. So I heard it from his perspective and not just the news anchor's perspective as well. Their concern is that with financial aid being cut and limited to people who come in without a GED through the IBEST programs and that sort of thing, that there's not going to be financial aid available to those people. And because we are a technical school, that's a large portion of where the students come from. Not The majority of us can't afford to write a check for $1,600 for a quarter's worth of tuition. So this is, there's concern that that enrollment will drop. And so they had a group of the students here, I believe some of you actually went down to the rally to, to rally against that. And what he explained was how the college is working to prevent enrollment from dropping if this happens to go through with the financial aid being cut. And what they're doing is they're putting together a program called Achieving the Dream. And that is something that's faculty based. The faculty, it's a, a web program for the faculty to uh, survey students, survey each other so that they can get a good idea of what is actually going on from the student's perspective and not just how they're seeing it so that they can provide the programs and the type of, type of environment that fit the type of students that come to Clover Park Technical College. They're a lot different than the ones that go to TCC or South Puget Sound, a, a typical community college, because we have different needs and we need our education to function around work and kids and a whole bunch of other things that we, that we have going on. So they're really working to continue to have Clover Park fit that niche. The second person that spoke, I didn't catch her name and unfortunately we weren't provided with an agenda at this meeting, which in retrospect would have been really helpful to have. <laughs> but And she even stated, June Stacey Clemens even stated she apologized for not giving us an agenda. And I don't believe she had one either. Um, they spoke about the library and I don't know that if any of you guys realize this, but they're working to renovate the, the library. And they're actually um, tearing down building 18 and then uh, trying to work to rebuild the library to make it more functional for current students, but also to be appealing to bring students to us. Because again, with all of the other options that people have out there, if we can make Clover Park an appealing type of school, which the library, I mean, we all have to go there. That's a very important part of the college, of any school. So they're working at renovating that. And the great thing that I, that I like to hear was that they're going to use some of the salvaged materials from Building 18 <coughs> to renovate the library, which was very interesting because it keeps the history of the school and it's also very resourceful to keep costs down. So that was very interesting. She was a great speaker. I really enjoyed watching her speak. She had a very soft, gentle voice, but she um, spoke very loudly. I, don't, that it, I tend to yell and she has soft, voice, but she, you could hear her clearly, which is important. Again, like I said before, can you hear me? Can you see me? And can you understand me? 
It was great. She had great big pictures of uh, blueprints of what the library was going to look like, and she did a great job of moving that around, so her visual tools were great. And I learned a lot from that, because I've been in those situations where you're speaking to people and you're trying to get a group of people to look and really see, and they're all in the back, somewhere in the back, and they can't see. But she did a great job of pointing out what needed to needed to be expressed within her what, within what she was saying. And so I took away from that meeting, or from yeah, from that meeting, that regardless of the situation, she was speaking to a group of peers. It wasn't a public speaking event where she was trying, you know, trying to rally troops or anything. She was just speaking about something that they already knew about. But the public speaking skills that we've learned in here were utilized. I saw a great speaker being able to express to a group of people what she needed to. And I took away from that a lot of great things that I can use in my job <laughs> and in the future. The second meeting that we went to was a um, <coughs> policy and procedures meeting. And again, I never ever expected that I would be walking into a <coughs> policy and procedures meeting at Clover Park Technical College. I've been to a ton of them in previous work experience, so it's not a new thing. I knew exactly what would be going on in there as far as what they would discuss and uh, the purpose of it. It actually was very interesting. They uh, the subject matter I didn't was not aware of. Dr. Phil didn't decide to divulge that. But it was great because I am very passionate about the subject matter. <laughs> it's the, the smoking and tobacco policy and procedure at Clover Park Technical College and the, the gift acceptance program, which they didn't spend much time on that because that's kind of a, a given how they handle. If you, somebody wants to gift money to the school, it has to be gifted through the school and not to a particular student. The, the smoking policy and procedure was very interesting. And I loved how the chairperson, uh, mediated the meeting because there were a few people that got very, very heated about the situation, whether they were for it or against it. And basically what they're trying to do is, the school, obviously we have smokers, we have non-smokers at the school. There's state law, you have to be 25 feet from a, a building's doorway to smoke. Well, we all know that rarely happens. It doesn't matter where you go. There's always a smoker standing in front that you have to walk through. I'm a non-smoker and I find it very, very, very offensive and I don't like walking through it. It makes me want to throw up. Rather, they were tossing around the idea of making the school a completely non-smoking environment, which for me, yay, that would be great. <laughs> but I know in real life that just it doesn't work that way. People have rights, and if they want to smoke, that's their right to smoke. However, they should make strict lines where you can smoke at. And so what they're, what they're <coughs> um, uh, suggesting is eight to ten smoking shelters and designated smoking areas and they've done surveys to see where most of the students gather and what's convenient for people so someone's not running in between classes clear across campus to find the one particular <coughs> smoking area or what would happen is they would just stand outside the door of the window and have their cigarette and then they've also tossed around with not having that and making it a completely non-smoking campus and then we have people lined up on the street outside of Clover <laughs> Park everybody having their cigarette and that doesn't represent the college well either because you got a bunch of people hanging outside the college smoking. So to keep it even, and they, they realized that, the people that were for it and against it were more concerned about compromise than they were about getting their own way, which is great in a board meeting if anybody's ever been there. That's important because you have everybody's different views and the, college, the college's best interest is really what they have in mind. So they came to basically an agreement to go ahead, they unanimous, unanimously voted to send it, to move forward with it, to present it to cabinet. So what that means is that they're gonna present what, whatever their decision was made to the cabinet to, make, to get the funding for the shelters. So what I found interesting is that each person was able to get their point across. Again, you can tell they all have had a public speaking course of some sort because they each knew how to stay on point and they knew exactly what to express and how to express it and they did it in a very <coughs> unemotional way regardless of their point of view. They stated their point and then they moved forward. And when, the, when it did start to go a little bit off course, the mediator did a great job and he just reeled it back in and said, hey, we're getting a little off point now, can you tell me again, how does this relate to where we're getting the funds for, which they're getting it from the reserve college funds and I wasn't sure what that was so I waited till after class and kind of got a, a quick rundown of how that all works and so it was very educational and <coughs> they did ask for comments from the public 
and Pam and I both spoke. I spoke several times and had to reel myself back in because I get very passionate about smoking. And also I like to talk, obviously. <laughs> so, <laughs> so all in all, I like the sound of my own voice. So. <laughs> all in all, I learned, even though I didn't attend exactly what Dr. Phil had put on our assignment, I still learned a great deal from the two things that I did attend. And I do plan on attending in another one, and I plan on attending it by the book, how I'm supposed to. So what I learned is that regardless of the place that you're speaking at, you need to be able to have people hear you, see you, and understand you. And that's not just verbally and your voice. It's how you are expressing your thoughts and your points. So with that said, I believe that Shelby quoted this, but I found it again, and I thoroughly enjoyed this quote because it's true that most people fear public speaking more than they do death or the dentist. I personally hate the dentist. Death is inevitable, and so I would definitely say that public speaking is up there when I know that I'm being graded. <laughs> if I know I'm not being graded, I don't have a problem with it. So with that said, I'm going to hand it over to Pam. Ooh, this is you too. I'll be broken. Thank you. That's what I'll be doing. <laughs> I would like to start off by apologizing to, to Dr. Phil because I didn't use the two people that he gave us to go to. Uh, one was church oriented and I have my own church things going on at the same time. And the other guy just didn't meet up with sick children and other things. However, I did make four meetings, um, a policy and procedure meeting, opportunity grant meeting, all staff, and surviving the killing field. <clears throat> I'd like to start off also, I mean, I'd like to also mention my readings. Uh, the first one was from uh, Reorganizing Clover Park from the Washington State Newsstand. It was Reorganizing Clover Park High School, making it a community to where the children will be ready for college when they move on to college out of high school. And they were given like $900,000 grant from uh, Bill Gates and his wife to make this happen. I also read from the ProQuest National Newspaper Corps how uh, Obama is holding teachers accountable if they're, and they're being evaluated if they are not teaching the children or passing enough children um, and getting their grades and things up, then they're being fired. And it's happening now all across, uh, it's happening right now on the East Coast. But it's moving this way too. <laughs> And the Washington State Newsstand is about uh, we're not planning for our aging society is a father who is upset that so many things are being taken from the education system for his son. He has two children and he doesn't understand that as they grow older they're learning less because they're taking so much from the schools. Uh, they're taking hours, they're taking uh, basketball, I mean they've taken already the basketball, all the extracurricular things. And with all the budget cut after budget cut, it's less and less that the children are being able to be taught in the classrooms. So we're want, he's wondering what's going to happen in the next 10 years, exactly what will our children be going to school to learn. Uh, moving on. My three points are be informed, express your thoughts and opinions, and make a difference. With uh, the four meetings that I went to, the policy and procedures, I think that my partner covered pretty much all of that uh, with the smoking and the gifts and that kind of thing. Uh, the opportunity grant is something that I sat in on because I wasn't aware that it was available to the students. And it's a good program. I have the criteria here, I'll pass it around. And you are able to, this is a program that if you, if it goes along with the BFIT, which is basic food and training, <coughs> so, or training. So if you are on food stamps and not on TANF, or on TANF, or on, or on TANF, and want to get off, then they give you all of your school money. They give you all the money that you need for your classes, and they pay for your books. The Opportunity Grant rolls over and helps you with any electrical bills, gas every month to go to school, and this makes it so that you can get all your Pell Grant and all the other money that you have coming in goes in your pocket. And that's a good program. 
uh, especially if you're a struggling mom like I am, single mom, or just have kids. It's, it's, that's a plus because all of the money that their tuition is going up and up and up. And so all the programs and grants that you can write a letter for and just get a grant, you need to apply for unless you're rich. Uh, the other meeting that I went to <coughs> was the killing field. And it was excellent. I could not, he didn't speak very good English, but you could tell he had compassion. You could tell that he lived this and he told the story pretty well. He answered all questions that was thrown at him. And I think that if once he gets his English better, you know, get it down better, the English language, he will do very well as a speaker. He, uh, explained how his mother got all after they were all taken from their mom from their mom and dad that they all ended up back together here in the United States years later and she was able to be with all of her children before she passed away in 99 and that was a blessing because he was he, he told about how he was starved and worked in these rice fields and they were given like one scoop of rice I'm not mistaken was it a week or a day anyone else there Every day. Yeah, every day one scoop of rice, and by the time he was uh, saved and brought back into civilization, he was uh, skin and bone and didn't have any hair. He had lost all nutrition, and he said prayer is what kept him alive through it all. And I'd like to end by saying we are blessed to go to school. We are blessed to be able to be educated. We are blessed every day to be able to come to this campus and have that freedom. So get involved, share your opinions and your thoughts, and make a difference for the future and the children that are coming.